Ayan, so let's have the next step. So again, we're done with glycolysis. Next is, um, sorry, we have pyruvate oxidation. And then now, let's have the second. Kasi nga, um, preparation stage lang naman yung pyruvate oxidation. So let's have the Krebs cycle or the second stage of aerobic cellular respiration. So the name itself, it's tatlo. Ang pwedeng name dito, citric acid cycle, tricarboxylic acid cycle, and then the Krebs cycle. So, bakit citric acid cycle? Because of the first molecule that forms during the cycle's reaction. So, meron tayong citric acid kasi na produce after the first process ng ating citric acid cycle. Pangalawa, bakit naging TAC? Tricarb uh, yeah, TCAC, tricarboxylic acid cycle because, sabi niya dito, for the three carboxyl groups on its first two intermediates. So, makikita niya yan later on kung ano yung carboxyl groups na sinasabi natin. And lastly, the Krebs cycle, of course, because of the discoverer, Mr. Hans Krebs. Okay, so how important is the Krebs cycle? So, this is the central driver of our cellular respiration kasi nasa gitna siya. Okay, so it bridges glycolysis and your electron transport chain. So what happens here? It takes your um, acetyl-CoA. Ayan, kinukuha niya ang acetyl-CoA kanina galing sa pyruvate oxidation and produce uh, and then what happens is this will become the starting material in a series of redox reactions that harvest much of its energy bond in the forms of NADH, FADH2, and ATP. So, when say redox reaction, it's reduction in oxidation processes. Kumbaga, ang nangyayari dito sa Krebs cycle natin. Okay? So, the reduced electron carriers, bakit sinabing reduced? Because they gained electrons. So, katulad ng nangyari kanina sa glycolysis, ganun din sa pyruvate oxidation, nagkaroon ng additional electron ang NADH. From NAD+, naging NADH. At ganun din si FAD+, magiging FADH2 siya dito sa Krebs cycle natin. Na kung saan yung electron sa bitbit -bit nila will go to the electron transport chain in order for us to produce ATP. So, here's the process of the Krebs cycle. Medyo madugo siya with the structures and all. Pero, actually, okay lang yan. We'll go step by step. So, saan nangyayari muna ang ating Krebs cycle? So, it happens in the matrix still. Um, specifically, aside from the matrix, doon sa inner membrane ng mitochondria na natin. Okay? No. Yeah. So, in prokaryotes, sa cytoplasm lang ito. So, the citric acid cycle is a closed loop that last part of the pathway forms the molecule used in the first step. So, Kung ang glycolysis may 8 steps, ito meron lang ta meron uh, glycolysis may 10, ito meron lang tayong 8 na steps. Okay? So again, ito yung matrix natin. This one will be the cristae or the inner membrane and then yung space dito that would be the intermembrane space between the inner membrane and then the outer membrane. Okay. So here are the steps of the Krebs cycle. So, step, tingnan natin step by step itong Krebs cycle natin. Step 1. So, acetyl-CoA combines with oxaloacetate. Okay? So, <laughs> ang oxaloacetate natin, it's a 4-carbon molecule. So, ang acetyl-CoA natin, 2-carbon molecule siya. So, pag nagsama sila, we are going to make a 6-carbon molecule. Okay? So, para lang itong yung photosynthesis, if you can remember. Carbon dioxide, tapos ang electron acceptor, ang acceptor molecule natin, sorry, will become, um, anong tawag dito? RUBP. Kung maaalala nyo yun. So, dito naman, acetyl-CoA will combine with oxaloacetate. And we have a specific enzyme para dito that would be our citrate synthase. Because the product is, um, anong product natin dito? Citric acid. Okay? So, from 2, acetyl. Ayan. Magkakaroon tayo ng combination ng apat. Okay? Through citric synthase with the aid of water as well. Nakakapag-produce tayo. Tatanggal dito yung coenzyme A natin. And we are going to form our 6-carbon molecule here. 
Ayan. Combination ng acetyl and then our oxaloacetate. So, what's ha what happens next? Meron tayong anim na carbon. So, that will be, uh, yun na yung natawag natin na citrate or citric acid. Yung citrate na 6 carbon, it will be converted again into its as isomer. At ang tawag natin sa enzyme is our aconitase. So, citrate will become isocitrate. So, paano lang yun? Ayan. So, magkakaroon lang ng reconfiguration sa kanilang structure. Okay, step 3. So, we have now an isomer of citrate, which is isocitrate. What will happen is that it will be oxidized. Pag sinabi natin oxidized, it will lose an electron. Okay? So, maglulose siya ng electron, it will transform into alpha ketoglutarate. So, si isocitrate ay anim. Ngayon, si alpha ketoglutarate, 5 carbon na lang siya. So, ipig sabihin, may nawala tayong carbon dito sa step na ito. And, ang product, ang, sorry, ang enzyme natin is isocitrate dehydrogenase. Okay? So, since nagkaroon ng oxidation dito sa part na ito, ipig sabihin, nawala ng electron si isocitrate. So, saan mapupunta yung electron na yon? Nakaabang si NAD plus doon in order to get that electron. In turn, magkakaroon tayo ng formation ng NADH plus H doon sa process na iyon. Aside from that, sabi natin 5 na lang to. Ano nangyari doon sa isa? It will be released as a carbon dioxide. Okay? So, since times 2, lahat ng process na ito, pero na tayong natanggal na dalawang carbon dioxide from the 2 acetyl CoA na pumasok. Okay. So, yan ay anim kanina, ha? Isocitrate dehydrogenase will take uh, takes its course and then marirelease ang carbon dioxide. Magre-release din ng electron ang ating isocitrate and then makakaform tayo ng NADH forming a 5 molecule compound called alpha ketoglutarate. Okay, step 4, alpha ketoglutarate, what will happen? Again, it will be oxidized na naman. It will now be oxidized and turn into succinyl CoA. Okay? But, <clears throat> so, this time, it is now a 4-carbon molecule. Si alpha ketoglutarate kanina, 5. So, ngayon, 4 na lang. So, siguro magkakaroon kayo ng guess kung saan napunta na naman yung carbon na isa. It will become carpo carbon dioxide. So, in this part, it will be the enzyme alpha ketoglutarate dehydro Genes. So, na-oxidize tayo. Ibig sabihin, nakapag-lose ng electron na naman. So, NAD plus is there again to get that electron and then form NADH and H plus. And then, it will take, it will take SH-CoA molecule as a reactant. Okay? So, yung coenzyme, yung, sorry, so, yung succinyl natin kanina, yun yung carbon molecule na apat. Then, CoA dahil na yun dun sa pumasok na, okay, reactant natin na si coenzyme A, kaya naging succinyl CoA from alpha ketoglutarate. So, yung oxidized na yun, oxidized process na yun, nakapag-produce tayo ng another carbon dioxide. Step 5, what will happen? So, from 5, magiging, okay, magiging, Apat na lang siya. But this time, mayroon tayong coenzyme A. Para siyang si acetyl CoA. Ito nga lang, succinyl CoA. So, mayroon tayong carbon dioxide produce and another NADH. So, times 2 lahat ito. Guys, step 5. What will happen? The coenzyme of succinyl CoA will be replaced by a phosphate group. So, mapapalitan yon, Which is then transferred to ATP to make ADP to make ATP. So, in some cells, GTP or guanine diphosphate instead of ATP. So, the same lang din naman yung GTP and ATP. Still, it's a source of energy. So, the 4-carbon molecule produced is succinate. Kasi mawawala na nga si CoA, magiging phosphate group siya. And then, that phosphate group will be given to ADP. So, ito ang enzyme natin is succinyl-CoA synthetase. So, ano nangyari? Succinyl-CoA. Tapos, si succinyl-CoA ay mag-a-undergo siya ng 
madadagdagan siya ng phosphate group kasi matatanggal yung CoA. And that CoA will be released. At yung inorganic phosphate na yun ay release din siya through the process of through the process made by succinyl-CoA synthetase. Okay, so from ADP, makakapag-produce tayo ng ATP or pwede rin naman ang GTP forming succinate. So, ito na yung 4 carbon molecule na yun. For step 6, succinate is then oxidized. Okay, meaning maglulose na naman siya to another 4 carbon molecule fumarate. So, in a reaction catalyzed by succinate dehydrogenase. So, ibig sabihin, mag-release siya ng electron. Meron na naman tayong electron carrier. But this time, it will be FAD. So, it will be reduced to FADH2. Reduced ito ha because it receives an electron. So, FAD HD in this reaction. So, si succinate magiging fumarate. So, still, it's 4 carbon Yun nga lang, may formation tayo dito ng electron carrier which is FADH2. Kasi si succinate ay nag-undergo ng oxidation at si FADH2 nag-undergo ng, uh, si FAD ay nag-undergo ng reduction. So, step 7. This reaction requires water. Okay? In our reaction. So, si fumarate magkakaroon ng reaction with water and then it will be converted into malate. Okay? Which is catalyzed by the enzyme fumarase. Fumarate, fumarase. Okay, so water magiging malate ang maproproduce natin. So step 8, malate is now going to be oxidized again. So lose na naman ng electron to oxaloacetate. Remember oxaloacetate, that is the first um, acceptor of our acetyl-CoA. Okay, nire-regenerate natin siya. So, that's the starting 4-carbon compound, which is going to be catalyzed by the enzyme malate dehydrogenase. Again, oxidize. So, may nakaabang na naman tayong NAD+, to get that electron. Okay, forming NADH. Okay, so malate to oxaloacetate. So, that would be our step 8. Ayan. So, this would be malate and then we have oxaloacetate and formation of NADH. So, what do we have for the process of Krebs cycle? We have, so multiplied by 2, always yun guys ha. So, we have 2 acetyl-CoA coming from pyruvate oxidation kasi dalawa din yung pyruvate natin doon. So, we have used 4 water molecules. And we have produced 2 ATP from step 5 ng ating um, Krebs cycle. And we released 4 carbon dioxide dito. So, plus 2 na naman doon sa pyruvate oxidation, we have a total of 6 carbon dioxide released. Ito na yung ina-exhale natin. And we produce 6 NADH, electron carriers. And then we also have 2 FADH dito ang produce natin and we regenerated to oxaloacetate. Okay, so those are the products of our Krebs cycle. So, it's quite tedious but again, ang goal lang niya is to produce our carbon dioxide aside from carbon dioxide. Also, its goal is to produce this electron carrier. So, you have NADH and FADH2. So that's it guys for our Krebs cycle.